Bugle, audio newspaper for a visual world. Hello, Buglers, and welcome to issue 4260 of the publication voted one of the world's top million audio newspapers for a visual world for 15 of the past 16 years. I'm not sure how we missed out in 2018. Bit harsh in my book. I thought the show was solid, but definitely top mill quality. Anyway, let, let, let's, let's just move on. I'm Andy Zaltzman, uh, just back from a very exciting trip, actually. Uh, time travel. Um, I got asked to review a new time machine for a history podcast. Um, the machine was, well, excellent. Uh, I went back to 30 AD just to see what was really going on, but I forgot to switch the location and I just ended up in what is now South London. Uh, the weather was shit, and I forgot to pack any food, so I just came straight back. Um, I can report they had trees then. That's that, that's really all I, I can tell you. Uh, joining me this week, well, not the Jew I was hoping to have on the show when I set the dial to 30 AD, but he will have to do. It's Nato Green. Hello, Nato. Hello, Andy. Hello, Buglers. It's good to be here. And joining Nato and me, Tiff Stevenson. Hi, Tiff. Hi, I feel quite upset because I thought I was a bit of an influencer, but uh, right. apparently there's time travel machine trips going on. That yep. feels like an influencer type <laughs> type deal. I don't well, know why I wasn't contacted. Yeah. Like I definitely T- could do some branding with that. Tiff, T- you were contacted. Check your message request DMs on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. You have okay. to accept oh, the... You know what it was, is they were sent before Instagram was invented. Uh-huh. So that's uh-huh. obviously where the confusion has occurred. Um, how have, uh, How's your week been, both of you? Reasonable. <laughs> I get depressed during the, the winter. I think I have seasonally affected disorder. Maybe it's the Vivaldi variant. I have it all four seasons. Uh, <laughs> 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 but more so uh, during the winter. So I've been desperate for the spring to get here. And it, it seems like little seeds of hope are popping up. And this morning I spotted a sparrow hawk in the garden. So that is possibly a good thing, but also quite scary for the other birds. Uh, really, I just think you need to go by whether the cricket season has started or not. That's that's really all you should need. Sparrow hawks can go f*** themselves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Andy, my my phone reminded me recently that like it was just it was just the four year anniversary of my first appearance on the Bugle. Oh, and uh, it took me three years and ten months to realize when you say in the bin, it refers to the trash bin. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I was as, like, as, why does he a... keep saying that? And finally, I was like, oh, it's like the section of the newspaper that you throw in the car because you're not into. <laughs> oh, I get it now. So, uh, always click you... on the uptake over here. What did you think it was? Uh, I, like a storage bin of some right, sort, okay. like to like for memorabilia. Archives? Sin bin, a sin, sin bin. bin. So yeah. you have that in sports. There, they have the sin yep. bin, don't they? Well, I'm, I'm glad that you finally you finally um, came to that it's, astonishing it's, realization. It's, it's never it's never too late to learn. Is the point? <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely is too late to learn. Our entire society and politics is based on the fact that we will never learn. Um, so yeah, that was at uh, that was at Cobb's Comedy Club on the live tour, wasn't it? Your uh, yeah, it was your bugle debut. Hopefully, we'll be back there at some point in the next hundred years or so. Uh, I should say, for any confused Twitter users uh, who listen to the Bugle, this Bugle is an official Blue Tick Bugle. I know the Blue Tick's been <laughs> undergoing something of a, a, I don't know, a regenerative process, uh, to put it posit- uh, positively, uh, on Twitter. But in fact, every Bugle, uh, official Bugle, uh, is a Blue Tick Bugle. If you listen very carefully in the background of every properly sanctioned episode of this podcast, right from the start, you can hear the sound of a Blue Tick. Um, so, Chris, can you just zoom in on... This week's tick, and we'll find out exactly how blue it is. Being a blood-sucking parasite makes me so sad. I don't want to be a vector of disease, but such is my fate, alas. Oh, look at that untrousered calf. Yep, I hate what I am. So, pretty blue tick, that one. <laughs> pretty, pretty blue tick. What was that accent, Andy? <laughs> I don't know, you Vamp- have to ask the Vampiric? tick. Vampiric? <laughs> Uh, we are recording on the 21st of April 2023. Uh, on this day in 753 BC, Romulus uh, founded the renowned city of Rome. Um, he was, of course, 
uh, World Fratricide of the Year in, I think, 754 BC, after bumping off his brother Remus, essentially after a bit of a family spat about town planning. Romulus was the first person known to have a personalised licence plate. Uh, his uh, open-top chariot uh, had a uh, R753 BC plate uh, glistening out, causing everyone in Rome uh, to think he was uh, a bit of a tool and wishing the other brother had won, and they'd ended up in a city called Reem instead, upon such threads. Does history hang? In 1509 on this day, Henry VIII became Henry VIII, having pre previously just been Henry. Um, his father, Henry VII, uh, died, and uh, the new Henry, Octo Hal, as he liked to be known, um, <laughs> came to the throne. And for a man renowned for the uh, well, his love of a wedding, um, uh, and of course for the uh, being the first Twitter user to swipe down, um, he averaged uh, approximately one spouse per 2.4 decades in the early phase of his reign, but then rattled through one per 2.7 years in the later years before leaving his sixth and final wife for his latest squeeze, death. And uh, on this day in 1934, the um, most famous photograph allegedly showing the Loch Ness Monster was published in the Daily Mail, known as the Surgeon's Photograph. It was revealed 60 years later to have been a hoax, meaning that the last fact ever published in the Daily Mail does still date back to 1927. <laughs> uh, as always, a section off the bugle is going straight in the bin. This week, we review the latest cutlery books, uh, including From Cutlery to Cultery, how one man's obsession with eating utensils led inexorably to a table manners based cult in the Patamanchian jungle that ended inevitably with the confusion of sporks. Uh, we review also Hitler's chopsticks, a fascinating insight into how an increasingly paranoid Fuhrer tried to ban all pointy cutlery in case someone tried to kill him with it. Uh, when tea sp <laughs> Sorry, I'm just seeing I'm just seeing Chris's face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also review uh, When Teaspoons Attack, a graphic and moving catalogue of some of the most harrowing injuries suffered by people using teaspoons, including 1920s film star Merrick Force losing an eye when trying Lapsang Souchong for the first time on the set of the silent movie Et Tu Tarzan, part of the briefly successful Shakespeare in the Jungle series. And we review Cruel Fate or Cruet Fail. Was the failure of the Scrivens Trefliard expedition to the South Pole in 1908 due not to misfortune, but to um, but to expedition leader Principal Scrivens' insistence on taking a full dinner set of cutlery, plus individual salt and pep pepper pots to cover all eventualities for any eight-course meal, not only for his overmanned 25-strong expedition team, but also in case they met any other polar exploration parties and needed to entertain. It goes into a lot of detail. Scrivens' team included a sommelier with a husky-drawn cellar of fine wines, a pianist to help while away the chilly evenings, a billiard table, his American tennis partner, Jarms with Delamore, who uh, was, of course, Wimbledon mixed doubles champion the previous year, alongside the controversially opinionated Lady Hits Hesperia Fitzbernard. Um, the... Uh, the co-expedition leader, Archibald Treffelyard, of course, didn't actually make it to Antarctica due to becoming inextricably involved in a bridge game at the Imperio Club in London that ended up lasting 14 years and only ended with the death of Lord Maunsley from a heart attack brought about by an aggressive bit of five no trumps. But the extra weight of the cutlery taken on the expedition is thought to have led to Scrivens and his men becoming stuck fast in the ice just 50 yards into their journey, falling short of the pole by around 600 miles. Anyway, this book really gets to the bottom of that fascinating expedition. That section, in the bin. <laughs> in the garbage. In the garbage. Thank you. Thank you. Andy, <laughs> what wine pairs with raw emperor penguin? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think you probably want a, I don't know, an 18, uh, 1893 Chateau Neuf du Pape, probably. I think that's what they took. Oh, anyway. no, Andy, surely don't you have a cup of tea with a penguin? <laughs> Very good. Now, that is... I mean, for, for people who've not grown up with the Penguin Biscuit, which is, I think, a distinctively British uh, <laughs> uh, confection, that, uh, that joke will not have got what it deserved, Tiff, but I, I admired it. The UK listeners will, be, will love it, <laughs> and the Americans will, will probably, as per usual, go, what is she talking about? <laughs> so no change from the usual. Top story this week, the United States of America, one of humanity's boldest, silliest and most self-loathing social experiments, is heading towards the end of its first quarter of a millennium with many questions still unanswered, including which of America's many states is the silliest? It's always hotly contested. NATO Green can bring us up to date with, a, well, a, an extremely 
feisty battle for top spots that is going on at the moment. Uh, NATO, what states in particular would you say are, are, are pulling ahead? Oh, Andy, I mean, it just, it, it feels like with uh, America, it feels like the merry-go-round is going faster and faster. And at some point, we're all going to get up, get off and throw up and fall down at the same time. <laughs> um, you know, when, when, when Trump was president, uh, uh, you know, people were like, oh, my God, we, we, you know, we thought we, we hit bottom. Uh, we thought that Trump was incredibly stupid. If you thought Trump was dumb, nah. How about some Republican state legislators uh, <laughs> like Trump, but with all the stupidity and no gold plate plated toilets? Uh, I mean, it's just it's like it's bananas. So Wisconsin had a judge's race uh, tip the balance of the Supreme Court uh, uh, that's in 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 a liberal direction in a way that might have bearing on uh, on the right to abortion and voting rights in the state of Wisconsin, uh, but at the same time elected a Republican to the state legislature who gives them a supermajority in the state Senate that will allow them to impeach the judge that they just elected. <laughs> it's like one step forward, two steps back. Uh, in Chicago, Illinois, there was a race for mayor. Uh, Brandon Johnson beat Paul Vallis to become mayor of Chicago. Uh uh, it was, uh, Johnson had the support of the Chicago Teachers Union. Vallis had the support of the police. It was a teachers v cops race. And, uh, <laughs> the teachers won. Uh, that seems, that seems good. Um, uh, but no, the media is already blaming Johnson for, uh, shoplifting in Chicago, even though he's not mayor yet. Um, <laughs> the big one that I'm most excited about is in, uh, is Tennessee. So, um, there was a so it, just to bring people up. Last month in Tennessee, there was a school shooting uh, that was committed by a trans person. The, the The shooter was under care for emotional disorder, but had seven legally purchased firearms. You would think that someone would have caught that, um, but anyway. So the whole thing was tragic. Following the event, three members of the state legislature led a protest on the floor. Two of them, named Justin, were expelled. By sheer coincidence, they were also black. There was a white lady who was not expelled. Everybody knows, if you're a comic, a white lady making a scene is just the Friday late show at a comedy club. <laughs> uh, the the Justins are also millennials. So, by, by the way, like I so I look, I was looking reading up on the Tennessee state legislature and I looked at the roster and uh, as a coastal elite from San Francisco, and I don't want to fit the stereotype. Of the uh, of like being judgmental towards the hardworking and humble heartland of America, but the Republicans have, have a state legislator named Brock Martin, um, <laughs> which just sounds like the generic knockoff brand of Doc Martins. Um, <laughs> like, oh, I got some new Brock Martins under the bridge. Um, the Justins were elected this year. Justin Pearson, one of them, was elected in a special election in January, took office, and less than two months later was kicked out for protesting. The balls at like. He didn't even finish the probationary period at the, at the new job before he was like, I'm burning it all down. Um, the, so the case blew up. They got they, The law required the local council to vote to create an interim appointment. So they appointed the same guys. Uh, the vote to expel them was called by this Republican House Speaker Cameron Sexton, who is now going to be famous for making them famous, like how Voldemort <laughs> made Harry Potter the chosen one by trying to kill him. But instead of he shall not be named, the guy's name is Cameron Sexton. And instead of the greatest dark wizard of all time, he's like a bank manager from Crossville, Tennessee, uh, who just wanted to keep a bust of the founder of the Ku Klux Klan in the state capitol, like Voldemort would have. <laughs> um, it was interesting sort of reading, reading about this, that uh, the, this protest involving the, the two Justins um, and, and Gloria Johnson um, – was described uh, as an insurrection, um, <laughs> which, by the standard of recent insurrections, wasn't very insurrectiony, and they were accused of participating in quotes disorderly behaviour. Now, the irony being, this was a protest against gun violence. Which, uh, I mean, w what would you say is worse, NATO? Some uh, quotes disorderly behaviour. Or the slaying of innocents to uphold a point of political principle. Well, yeah, I mean, they, you know, it, it was disorderly behavior and a breach of decorum. 
<laughs> and you know, I mean, I think I think if someone breaches decorum, they should be murdered. Right. I think that's the American way. Okay. But, I mean, it, I've obviously sorry, sorry. I've, no, I've no wish to pass my I've no wish to pass my personal judgment on America's rights to watch his own citizens being gunned down in cold blood because of shit for brained interpretations of a two hundred and thirty year old piece of legislation. That's that's not that's not for me to say. For us outsiders. It's hard to understand how each apparent tragedy is, in fact, a reassertion of America's unique greatness. As a nation, we can't understand how it's only through allowing and encouraging gun slaughter that you can foster as lively and engage a debate on guns as America enjoys. And we don't have much of a gun debate in Britain. So in many ways, America's doing better, I think, if we look at it from that interpretation. Um, uh, Tiff, uh, uh, I, I know you're a huge fan of, uh, of Tennessee as, a, as an adjective. Um, um, but but uh, as a state, how do you find it? <clears throat> well, listen, I'm into Gloria and the Justins. I'm going to do it that way round because then it sounds like a cool band, right? <laughs> that I would listen to Gloria and the Justins. Uh, but it was it backfired incredibly, didn't it? Because what happened was they they expelled two black reps and not the white woman. And the two men who were expelled are both incredible public speakers, very charismatic, both of them under 30. And all it did was just increase their platform and get the message out further about gun reform. So it actually ended up... And they've both, uh, they've both been brought back in. But um, Gloria, uh, she narrowly survived an expulsion vote. And the Republicans said... She played a smaller role in the protest and did not use a megaphone. And she said, I think it might be because I'm white. <laughs> um, and uh, But the megaphone thing is wild because what that says to me is that, like, it's not what you say, it's how loudly you say it. <laughs> and they said it very loudly. So a lot of people could hear and we didn't like how reasonable it sounded. We object to that. Um, also, I mean, the, the megaphone specifically is an inherently comic means of amplifying your voice. If they just done it with a... With a, you know, with an ordinary microphone, it probably wouldn't have had quite the same effect. But there's something about the megaphone that is it's just huge. Th- yeah, it's it's fun. the megaphone and the tiny microphone that you see a lot of influencers or people on TikTok use. Have you ever seen them use the tiny tiny mic? Huge and small is hilarious. Like with penises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we're at the point where it just like what will it take? Like you're having to come up with new words for for gun massacres, you know, shooting, sprees, gun violence, mass shooting, serial shooter, gun situation, which is what Trump started calling it, which sounds like a bullet-ridden episode of Jersey Shore. Um, <laughs> but uh, I I can't... What I was thinking, because I've been thinking about this, when I was in Louisiana, they had an uh, open carry discount, which was to say, uh, if you go into a store there and you're carrying a weapon, you get like 10% off, 15% <laughs> off, right? Which is... Um, if they don't give you the money off, presumably you take what you like because you've walked in with a 100% discount in reality if you want it, like, uh, on your person. But I sort of thought that was mad. And I was like, God, if if you're broke, you can't afford to not have a gun if you want to get money off stuff. So I think we need to stop um, de-incentivizing gun ownership and incentivize using your wit and, if necessary, your fists. So you get a no-carry discount. So that is a certificate that you bring everywhere saying you don't have a gun registered in your name. You show it, you get 25% off everything, everywhere, (laughs) forever. So it's the opposite of a open carry. It's a no carry. And then I don't know. I'm not advocating the use of fists, by the way. I was just saying if someone comes at you with fists, you can fist back. I haven't thought this through, clearly. (laughs) I'm suggesting fisting as an option. Let's not... Let's rescind the fists. Sure. Uh, but but I, I do, do you think... Mean, do you mean fisting as, as in terms of punching or like the sexual act? <laughs> well, I meant punching, but increasingly it sounded more sexual the more I said it. So. <laughs> yeah. If someone wants to fight and you want to finger their butthole, that's an appropriate response and you should get a discount at the store. <laughs> do you just need to gradually go back in time? So from today's guns, go back to the 1790s weaponry that presumably the 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 second amendment was designed for the um, muskets that take then, a while to load yes back back to a you know, proper cutlass and then maybe just a eventually a, a stick and uh you know i think yeah you know, just gradually wean america off its addiction to self-harm Uh, Tiff, I know you have friends in the Chicago media. I believe you've uh, you've asked one of them to give us a a full report on the uh, the uh, Merrill race. 
Oh, yes, yes. I have asked for a rundown from my friend, the News Hawk. Ah, well, it was a close race, but in the end, this guy, Brandon Johnson, won. He's real square. He's finally going to rid this town of all the punks and get them in the cab. Send those criminals to the big house, but only if they've done big crime. He wants to reform the police. That other guy, Vallis, he's got a head as smooth as a pebble and the personality to match. He wanted the streets crawling with coppers. Experiences taught me never to trust the policeman. Just when you think one's all right, he turns legit. Johnson declared in his victory speech that <laughs> Chicago is a union town. So as a great union member, I'm off to drink some giggle chews and watch that canary with the great gams belt out a couple of tunes. <laughs> On the subject of the Supreme Court, uh, NATO, uh, Clarence Thomas, uh, Supreme Court uh, Justice of, uh, cons- well, long st- 1991, I think he uh, he joined the Supreme Court, was the longest longest serving member of the Supreme Court, because when you appoint someone to a job, why not let them do it for 32 years until uh, um, uh, death intervenes? Uh, but he is, according to Vanity Fair magazine, quotes, on a quest to be the most corrupt justice in the Supreme Court, um, which I'm not sure if he's defined that quest himself, if he's accepted the challenge of such a quest from some divine being, of which uh, uh, we, we don't know yet. But there's an increasing scandal over his relationship with uh, a right-wing donor, Harlan Crow, who is, um, aside from um, uh, dousing Thomas with, uh, with, with gifts, which he's not declared... Uh, he is, uh, Crow, a collector of far-right memorabilia, including paintings by Hitler. Um, now, uh, it's quite hard to unpack uh, all of this. I guess, you know, when you look at the Supreme Court, obviously, you know, the Supreme Court itself is a kind of traditional built-in corruption on which the American body politic is founded. Uh, but you want its <laughs> actual members to be, at least to be pretending to be law-abiding fans of, well, I guess the law and also as the supposed leading minds of their country albeit within the subset of leading legal minds uh, with the right political alignment for whoever happens to be president at the time before they were appointed for all eternity you want them to have the wisdom to think when offered freebies by a known hitler enthusiast you want them to be smart enough to think how does this look and ideally think that the answer is bad it's andy it's even worse than that it's that it's that if you're offered freebies by a known Hitler enthusiast, you're not supposed to say, I don't think I should do this. You're just supposed to write it down on a form. <laughs> <laughs> I put it in the ledger. Isn't that good enough? Uh, so Harlan Crow collected Nazi memorabilia, as you mentioned, including paintings by Hitler, which is odd because arguably uh, paintings were not Hitler's best work. <laughs> uh, like of Hitler's contributions to mankind, of the things that Hitler excelled at, painting is near the bottom of the list. <laughs> like say what you will about Hitler, but you know, like no one was uh, has ever been like Hitler, horrible person, but quite a painter. Uh, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> you see his brush stroke. Uh, so you have to be really into Hitler. Like you know, you could imagine a, like a Nazi enthusiast going, you know, I want to have. Uh, some Hitler m- military tactical maps or s- copies of speeches or Gestapo boots or mustaches or whatever. Like getting into the paintings is like a deep, you have to be so into Hitler to be like, yeah, I want the paintings. <laughs> um, what so, you, so moustaches, you, are you saying he, suggesting he had a series of stick on moustaches? Um, yes, <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. It reminds me, I mean, I had a flashback because when I was in college, I, w- I was at a party. And there were some guys at the party, like there were hundreds of people at the party in this house, and there were some guys in a room with Nazi memorabilia, like SS helmets and flags and armbands. And I went to the host of the party, and I was like, what the f***, man? Why are there Nazis in this house? And he said, oh, don't worry, NATO. They're not Nazis. That's just their thing. Uh, (laughs) And I was like, that's not a thing that you can have. Like, it's not, you know, it's not like, oh, this is, I had my Nazi phase and then I had my emo phase and it's just an aesthetic I was trying on. Like, <laughs> it was just a big misunderstanding. Anyway, so the, the donor didn't only, uh, pay for, uh, Harlan Crow didn't only pay for vacations that Thomas didn't di- disclose, but he also bought Clarence Thomas's mom's house. 
uh, in Savannah, Georgia, and paid to have it renovated by an award-winning architect. Like any of us would <laughs> casually do for a friend we were not trying to influence in any way at all to buy their house and renovate it. So there's a, a, a Fox News commentator, Juan Williams, who is a good personal friend of uh, Clarence Thomas and wrote, wrote an article about the, the stink of corruption around him and who described uh, Thomas as a pleasant guest at his birthday parties. Um, <laughs> And I can see a Republican ideologue being really into playing pin the tail on the donkey. Um, <laughs> does that joke travel across the, because the yep. donkey d- Democrats? Okay. So, uh, <laughs> who, I don't know. I, I may have over, o- overthought it. So, but, uh, uh, according to Juan Williams, uh, in his, he said Thomas can quote Malcolm X by heart and represented the best ideals of what black men could accomplish. Which I guess in this case is to sexually harass a woman and get away with it for 30 years and then marry a white woman involved in a conspiracy to overthrow the U.S. government while hanging out with Nazi billionaires to end (laughs) democracy, just like Malcolm X would have wanted. Uh, When Malcolm X said, by any means necessary, I'm pretty sure he didn't mean these particular means. Um, (laughs) Also, when you're being... Yeah, you know, but you're being criticised by a Fox News analyst. That's not ideal for for Clarence Thomas. I mean, that's like being lectured about your attitude to women by the Saudi Arabian government. It just doesn't. Yeah, you, know, you think that that's really it's not looking good, is it? One final piece of American news: a Tennessee Air National Guardsman has reportedly been arrested after applying for a job on the spoof website rentahitman dot <laughs> and reportedly telling undercover agents that he was not only an excellent shot, but was also quite happy to torture people and cut off their fingers and ears. Now, I guess when you find yourself applying for a job like that, you might think, what has happened to my life? But, you know, we all look for jobs that suit our skill set. Now, I I personally am very fortunate that I have essentially two jobs that that I love, uh, that that suit who I am as a person, that, that, that are extensions of my true self, you know, as, as a cricket obsessive with a lifelong aversion to reality, responsibility and regular working hours, being a comedian and cricket statistician suits me perfectly. So for Josiah Garcia, who one assumes has a lifelong scepticism of bits of the body that stick out and secretly enjoys the sound of screaming, a job that involves <laughs> chopping off ears and fingers and shooting people must must have appealed. You can, you can understand that. Uh, one um, extraordinary detail was that he apparently... Uh, having been arrested said he's not going to take the job anyway because he'd uh, received a job offer from a nashville medical center (laughs) (laughs) and i guess it would have been interesting to see how long he lasted ah uh, mrs fribbins good to see you again do sit down now has your cough got any better it hasn't so uh chopping off your fingers and ears has not helped ah right uh, (laughs) any side effects are you finding you're playing the piano less well uh and your glasses keep falling off Mm mm-hmm (laughs) <laughs> I mean, how do you just the web, the name of the website? Like you would yes. assume that immediately it was a parody. Yes. Like yeah, if you don't <clears throat> spot that, then it might suggest you don't have the attention to detail that is really a key part of the job of being a hitman. Ah, uh, well, he's he's from Tennessee. So how did they advertise? Did they um, did they say it or did they shout it loudly through a megaphone? <laughs> um, so we need to know it makes a difference it is curious i don't know how you find out whether or not you've you've got the skills required i mean you know it's, i mean can you do like a work experience placement or um i think you have to have um is it you have to have a teenage daughter who potentially oh, yeah, gets kidnapped yes on her way oh, to watch you two in concert in europe <laughs> Yes, you then do have you to put acquire, that on, yeah. Then you find out if you have a particular set of skills. Right, you do have to put that on your, on your CV. <laughs> UK news now, and uh, well, news breaking today that the Deputy Prime Minister, Dominic Raab, has quat uh, after a report into uh, his alleged bullying um, when he was Foreign Secretary. A report found that he had been unreasonably and persistently aggressive in the meeting. And um, his behaviour also involved, quotes, an abuse or misuse of power in a way that undermines or humiliates. A report concluded that his conduct was abrasive and and felt intimidating or insulting 
but was not intended to be so. It's a rather curious, <laughs> curious case, this, in the sense that, I mean, you might view this as bullying. You might view it as someone being a little aggressive in the workplace uh, in a slightly old school way. The, the, the more important pertinent question is, why the f*** was he deputy prime minister in the first place? How had he not been fired for years and years of being unbelievably f***ing incompetent, as reported on um, Passim on on the bugle. Um, the report cited an example where Rob... Reporting dis- doing a lot of work there. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the report cited an example where Rob described someone's work as, quote, utterly useless and woeful, before he reportedly added, can you people quit muscling in on my territory? Um, I mean, Tiff, I know you're a huge fan of Dominic Rob. I've seen the tattoos. Uh, you must be very sad <laughs> that he's... Uh, no show where the in, channel in is. Um... <laughs> Um, can I say it? Can I say it? Rabsy exit. <laughs> yes. Well, there we go. Rabsy exit. Okay. Um, again, this is one that specifically, like the penguin biscuit joke, is really not going to make sense to anyone <laughs> outside of the UK. But um, yes. Yeah. Well, we, you should expect that there, there was a, a, a TV comedy show called Rabsy Nesbit. Nesbit. Yes. So, yeah. you know, actually, I mean, technically. Oh. Yeah. Technically, so Rabsy's that's, that's, yeah, the exit. That's acceptable. So it's, it's yep. punny, punny. It's punny, punny. <laughs> I knew you'd like it. Um, so, Dominic. I wouldn't let the door hit you on the way out. Well, he probably won't because he would probably hit it first. <laughs> it, there were like 20 plus complaints. I might, we should fact check that maybe. But uh, he said, actually, out of those 20, they only found that I bullied two of them, which is not quite the slam dunk that you think it is, is it? To go, well, it was just only two people. But I'm um, in setting the threshold for bullying so low, this is what he said, this inquiry has set a dangerous precedent. Now, I'm sure if Boris was your previous boss, your threshold for bullying was quite high. But that doesn't mean it's a good thing. Like, a lot of those stories went to boarding school where it's part of the training. You have to, it's actually, you have to do bullying. Um, You take turns, you know. Well, some people stay on the bottom of the bullying rung and have to clean all the shoes uh, and make the beds and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, it's it's part of the the training. Um, I mean... He's not good at his job. He's never been good at his job. And like you say, surely before... How did how did he manage to get there in the first place? It's uh, what we know is that... Um, you know, they say like cream rises. But in this government, I think it's like incompetence rises. Like an ingredient in a souffle. It's like yeasty. <laughs> incompetence is yeasty. Because somehow throughout this government, it just keeps rising and rising and rising. How dare you people complain? Uh, you in spoiled Brits that you have someone who all he did was be bad at his job and abusive to mid-level civil servants and had the self-respect to resign. Like in in America, that would qualify him for higher office. Like it's <laughs> it's in the national anthem that you get to abuse the 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 staff. Uh, like it's unbelievable to me that he that there was oh there were complaints there was an investigation it was sustained and then he resigned like. That seems like the system's working great. <laughs> I, I would I would argue on the self-respect bit because he also didn't resign at first when he was told to resign. So I think it was a more of a resign before you're fired. And it also oh, yeah. was very very much a, res, a resignation saying, I have to resign, but I, I personally don't think I should be resigning. And he <laughs> listed all the reasons why he didn't really mean it, essentially. Now, I guess some people would argue that in positions of responsibility... I, I, I resign. I was not a bully you <laughs> uh, yeah some people might argue that in positions of responsibility it's all about doing whatever it takes to get the job done and be able to speak firmly and directly to those people who work for you and also surely more importantly how will this country continue to attract the best caliber of the you know the rabian level of quality people to high level public office if you if they do not have the workplace perk of being able to psychologically destroy their underlings, flaunt their overweening egos and act like a total shithead whilst failing to get anything discernible done anyway. So I I worry about the impact this will have on recruitment into politics. The new deputy (laughs) prime minister is Oliver Dowden, who, again, we've talked about uh, periodically on The Bugle. He's the man who you may remember uh, blamed last year the weakening of the West, as he described it, not on the hollowing out of society by the forces of untrammeled capitalism and political and economic short-termism, or one of the other many contributing factors, but on 
some people wanting to use different pronouns, which he said has essentially left the West unable to deal with Putin. He is now Deputy Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. So uh, talk about failing upwards. Um, I th I'm not sure what direction this is failing in. It's that kind of scattergun flailing. flailing. What flailing. direction is yeah. it flailing in? Coronation news now. And, well, very exciting news ahead of the uh, coronation of King Charles, our feudal overlord, who will be uh, officially bekinged on the 6th of May. Uh, his coronation is to feature... Shards of the True Cross, which have been given to him by the Pope. Not just any Pope, the actual Pope. Not a guy in a Pope outfit. The actual Pope has given him bits of the cross. One bit that is a centimetre long and one bit, I think, that's five centimetres long. Um, to to help him, I don't know, coronate himself even, even better. The Greek government has also offered to douse the king in water from the river Styx to make him immortal. So, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be a sensational... <laughs> sensational coronation yeah, with with bits i don't know if it's still got any bits of jesus on this cross i don't know which bit of the cross it's from it might be i don't know the bit that, I, I mean i hope it's not from the bit but yeah but that his ass was on um, um, well, you hope <laughs> so you can't describe that. it as coronating himself <laughs> that sounds so <laughs> masturbatory <laughs> that's essentially what it is <laughs> isn't it <laughs> it comes with special oils tim <laughs> It's a very expensive wank. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> yeah. So in a Using very expensive civet oil, as we discussed. <laughs> it's international wank. Uh, <laughs> what do you give the man who has everything, including huge amounts of entitlement? Shards. Um, shards of the cross. I mean, I mean that, that, is how high, that is how high you've got to go to give a member of the royal family, to give the monarch of this country something they don't already have, a bit of the fucking cross. I've got a true cross fact box actually because I did a lot of research into this because obviously you know for for my team um, it's a bit of a controversial piece of wood to be honest it's cost us cost us a lot of market <laughs> share over the years so here is the bugle true cross fact box. <laughs> Fact one, if you put together all the pieces of wood claiming to be from the True Cross, you would be able to build a wooden Empire State Building and crucify a giant wooden King Kong to it. <laughs> Fact two, golfer Ben Hogan won the Open Championship in 1953 using a three-wood reportedly made from the True Cross. Every shot he played went perfectly down the middle of the fairway, accompanied by a shaft of heavenly light and a choir of angels singing, Get in the hole! <laughs> Uh, fact three, do be careful when handling fragments of the True Cross, as they can be sharp, and if a splinter of the True Cross pierces your skin and enters your bloodstream, you could end up being unable to handle any vessel containing water without automatically turning it into wine, behaviour which could see you barred from your local swimming pool and or accused of insensitivity towards teetotalers. Uh, fact four, if you think you might have a fragment of the True Cross but aren't sure, please contact your local church. If you take the fragment to the church and the organ starts playing spontaneously before you float up towards the heavens, smashing through any stained glass windows that might be in the way, then yes, it is a fragment of the True Cross. And finally, fact five, it is thought that Jesus was quite impressed with the workmanship of the cross. The Gospel according to St Nigel quotes Christ as saying, Gotta say, that is beautifully sanded and elegantly finished with a clear varnish that really brings out the grain of the wood. Terrific job. It's an absolute pleasure to be crucified on such a lovingly crafted piece of work. But, uh, and I will say this now if I may, don't you think it seems a real shame to whack nails into it? Guys, can we take a rain check on the nails? <laughs> Uh, any other uh, any other coronation news, Tiff? It's uh, only a couple of weeks now till uh, well, till the big day. My husband sent me uh, a wiki page, and I'm thinking about divorcing him uh, <laughs> because of it. Because it was uh, it was an article about someone called Roland the Farter. It said Roland the Farter, known in contemporary records as Roland le Fatier, Rolandus le Fatier, or Roland le Petur, was a medieval flautist who lived in 12th century England. He was given Hemingstone Manor in Suffolk and 12 hectares of land in return for his services as a jester for King Henry II. Each year he was obliged to perform um, Unum Sultum et Sifultum et Unum Bumblublum. <laughs> one jump, one whistle, one fart for the King's Court at Christmas. Now, I have to say, right, 
It, so my husband sent it to me going, is this a relative of yours? <laughs> I think he's saying I fart a lot and it's not a lie. And I think if I can get an invite to the coronation, that is probably my way in. Um, because this said, like, imagine farting so good that the king gives you a 30 acre estate. And uh, I think I could be I could be this generation's Roland <laughs> if I'm just given the chance. So that's my pitch to get an invite to the coronation. I will turn up. I will fart in front of the king. I will make it loud. I will make it wet. And I'm going to reclaim <laughs> some of the land for the serfs and the peasants. And I'm going to take it back. Uh, Chris, have, have you been invited to the coronation? Yeah, I have actually. Oh, right. I'm really looking that's forward good. to it. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm going to be a Prince Charles's chair. <laughs> do you have to say do you have to be like the forms and say sit on it <laughs> then i have to do a ceremonial jumping of the shark as everyone does at such events yeah <laughs> that brings us to the end of this week's bugle we will be back in about 10 days we're shifting back to uh recording early in the week as the news quiz is back next week which you'll be able to hear on bbc sounds uh, a quick plug for a regular uh, Bugle co-host, Hari Kondabolu has a new YouTube special entitled Vacation Baby, which is available now. Uh, do watch it, uh, Buglers. Uh, NATO, what do you have to plug this week? Well, as always, I have some comedy albums out, the NATO Green Party and the Whiteness album. You can get them. Uh, the best way to, to get money to the artist is via Bandcamp. Also, uh, if you're in the San Francisco area t- on Saturday, uh, April 22nd, I will be judging the U.S. Air Guitar Championships. Um, <laughs> oh, so how do you do be, that? I will I be mean, a cele- celebrity judge of the U.S. Air Guitar Championships. Is anyone going acoustic this year? <laughs> <laughs> I will report back. Uh, it's, a, it's at bottom of the hill, uh, so and uh, otherwise gigging around. Uh, Tiff, uh, any shows you'd like to? I uh, am on tour, on uh, starting in two weeks. Uh, so in May I'll be on tour I think the first dates are Southampton please buy some tickets for that one Um, Southampton Bristol and Cambridge I think are the first week Um, so I'd love to see you there also check out Catharsis uh, my podcast with the Bugle Network a whole network a whole network of podcasts now um, and we've got some fantastic guests uh, we have had a recent one with Mark Thomas uh, we've got one coming up with Ali Makovsky uh, one coming up with Lou Sanders so looking forward to getting your feedback guys and by feedback I mean like and subscribe that's what <laughs> the main feedback what I'm only looking for is positive feedback but yes uh, please, please check them out. Listen, like us, love us. We will now play you out with more entrance to the Bugle Wall of Fame. Uh, if you want to join the Bugle Voluntary Subscription Scheme and give a one-off or a current contribution to help keep the show free, flourishing and independent, go to thebuglepodcast.com and click the donate button. Goodbye. Sarah Nakmias was responsible for the high reputation of ancient Greek philosophy superstar Plato. After proving that what people had thought was badly spelled and poorly written nonsense was in fact really quite clever stuff, but in a foreign language using a different alphabet. Nicola Lawson calculated for NASA that when launching a space rocket to the moon, you did not actually have to wait until the moon was directly above the launch pad. You do in fact have to factor in lots of other stuff, including whether you launch your rocket with spin. Aaron Green was the person who suggested adding dimples to the surface of golf balls in order to stop passing birds thinking that a vengeful egg was heading their way whenever a golfer's golf shot with a golf ball sent the golf ball flying towards them. Birds are haunted enough by guilt at the best of times, explained Aaron, it seemed the very least I could do. Sean Nulty dissuaded Albert Einstein from trying to launch a career as a nightclub DJ under the pseudonym MC Square, and convinced him instead to do much more physics. James Tunnicliffe similarly convinced escapology celeb Harry Houdini not to branch off into crime fiction, and Houdini's whodunits remains mercifully unpublished to this day. Peter Hennessy convinced science duo Marie and Pierre Blottersnitch to change their surname, to something more befitting people making significant medical breakthroughs that could help people recover from serious illness. His suggestion of Curie proved instantly popular. Paul Thomas did his very best to make table tennis more popular as a global spectator sport, 
by suggesting that, like in actual non-table-based tennis, tournaments should be played on different surfaces, and Kyle Cohen jumped in to back up this suggestion, advocating, amongst other potential table surfaces, clay, grass, concrete, so far so tennis, astroturf, antique tablecloth, snooker-style green bays, ice, gravel, corrugated iron, writhing tray of worms and bed of nails. Regrettably, their suggestion was not accepted.